The hit movie franchise known as Scream was started by aspiring screenwriter Kevin Williamson back in 1994, but his inspiration for the film came from a gruesome series of crimes occurring in Gainesville, Florida in 1990, committed by a seriously disturbed man named Danny Rowling. I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now, and today we're talking about the true crime story of Danny Rowling, the Gainesville Ripper. Daniel Harold Rowling was born in Shreveport, Louisiana on May 26, 1954 to a 19 year old mother named Claudia. His father James was a Shreveport police officer and a decorated Korean War veteran who may have suffered from some combination of post traumatic stress disorder and inherent mental illnesses. James was incredibly horrible to his family. He told Danny that he was unwanted from birth. James also physically tormented Danny, Danny's mother Claudia, and his brother Kevin, who was born in 1955, for the tiniest of things, such as breathing in a way that displeased him or not crawling properly. Danny failed the third grade for too many absences due to illness, which caused his mother to have a nervous breakdown. Danny's school counselors described him as, quote, suffering from an inferiority complex with aggressive tendencies and poor impulse control, which would not help as he grew older and picked up substances. This only worsened his fragile mental state, and at age 14, Danny's neighbors caught him peeping into their daughter's room. Rowling eventually turned to art and music to help him. One of his fondest memories was a Christmas gift of a guitar at age 15. It's also suspected that in this dark childhood is when he likely developed multiple personalities as a defense. Danny tried to stay in control and he attended church and struggled to hold down steady work. At six foot two, Danny Rowling was a massive, powerful man, so he decided to enlist. The Navy wouldn't take him, so he joined the Air Force. He eventually was kicked out of the Air Force in 1972 after too much substances, which included taking acid more than 100 times and getting busted for possession. Rowling went to live with his grandfather and for a time found some stability through his church, even marrying a woman named O'Mather Halco, with whom he had a daughter. Unfortunately, at the age of 23, after being with her for four years, he drove O'Mather away after exacting the same sort of terrible things on her that he had suffered at the hands of his father. She separated from him in 1977 after he threatened to end her life. Rowling's went even further downhill after the divorce. He attacked a woman who resembled his now ex-wife, he ended the life of a woman in a car accident, and embarked on several armed robberies through the southern United States, leading to his incarceration in Jackson, Georgia in 1979. The 80s didn't see much of a change for his life either, as he was in and out of jail in Alabama and Mississippi for armed robbery. He broke out of prison several times and his time in between stints in jail were spent traveling the country, being fired from and quitting several jobs, stealing and occasionally forcing himself on women. In Shreveport, Louisiana in November of 1989, Rowling was fired from his job at a restaurant and that same night he broke into a home and caused the tragic passing of 24 year old Julie Grissom, her nephew Sean and her 55 year old father Tom. The following May, Rowling got into one final argument with his father that this time resulted in him shooting James in the stomach and head. His father survived but lost the use of an eye and an ear. Denny then broke into someone's house and stole identification papers, changing his own identity. He fled Shreveport and took a bus to Sarasota, Florida to start a new life as Michael Kennedy Jr. in July of 1990. Rowling, now going by Michael Kennedy Jr., set up a campsite in a wooded area in Gainesville, Florida behind the University of Florida. On August 24th, 1990, he brutally made freshman Christina Powell and Sonia Larson his first victims in Gainesville after following them home, breaking into their house, and overpowering them. This was followed by Santa Fe Community College student Krista Hoyt the next day, posing the crime scene in a sick, grisly, and pretty twisted way. His rampage continued despite news spreading across the university, with the police putting out as much information as they could and students sleeping in groups and taking every precaution they could. On November 27th, this maniac resurfaced again at the home of two 23-year-old UF students, Manuel Taboda and Tracy Pauls. A former high school football player, it's suspected that Taboda put up a fight before both were overwhelmed as Rowling did not attack these two in the same savage ways he did with the other victims. All of these crimes were committed within a two mile area of each other. Yet, the killer was incredibly hard to find. Danny Rowling's had learned from his father, who was a police officer, how to cover his tracks well and he disposed of most evidence that could have incriminated him. Thousands of 
of students fled the school with others taking extreme precautions out of fear. A local task force was assembled to try and find answers. Now authorities did have one suspect, a University of Florida student who briefly lived in the same complex as two of the victims and had shown some erratic behavior. But it turned out that this student was battling acute manic depression and had zero evidence connecting him to the murders. Meanwhile, the real Gainesville Ripper continued to steal from homes and gas stations, eventually robbing a Winn-Dixie grocery in Ocala, Florida, a crime for which he was finally caught after a high speed chase caused him to crash his getaway car on September 8th, two weeks after his crimes at the university. But no one knew he was the Gainesville Ripper until the next year when authorities, noticing similarities in the Gainesville crimes and the Shreveport crimes, called for DNA samples from Shreveport originated convicts. Authorities used a tooth extracted from Rowling's to link him to the DNA evidence at the Gainesville crime scenes. At this point, he was rightfully already facing multiple life sentences for his various armed robberies. But in June of 1992, Rowling was formally charged with the killings of the five Gainesville students. Rowling began corresponding with journalist Sandra London, who would inexplicably become his fiance and help him put together a book, The Making of a Serial Killer, The True Story of the Gainesville Murders, in the killer's own words. While he had pleaded not guilty, he used another fellow inmate to confess to the murders. In February 1994, just before the start of his trial, Rowling changed his plea to guilty. A psychiatrist hired for the trial described an alternate personality of Rowling's named Gemini, who drove him to commit his most heinous crimes. Two other psychiatrists also testified that a severe personality disorder was at play in Rowling's mind, but they also stated their belief that Rowling understood the magnitude of his crimes. The jury unanimously found Rowling guilty of first degree murder on all five counts in late March. And a month later, he was sentenced to be brought to an end, which took place at Florida State Prison on October 25th, 2006. But as we know, that's not the end of things. In March 1994, Kevin Williamson, an aspiring screenwriter and struggling actor, became heavily interested in the story of this drifter, Danny Rollings, who brought terror to a university. It scared the life out of him, and he figured it would do the same for others, turning the story into a screenplay for the super successful 1990 horror movie Scream. The movie didn't directly translate the crimes committed by Rowlings, switching the setting and characters to high school, and it played on horror film tropes and brought a new breath of fresh air for the horror genre. Kevin Williamson explored the fear caused by the Gainesville Ripper, and it blasted his career forward. On top of the crazy successful movie, Rowling is the subject of the book Beyond Murder by John Philippin and John Donnelly. He's also the subject of an episode of Body of Evidence from the case files of Dale Hinman, a court TV show, and an episode of Forensic Factor titled Killing Spree. The book Drifter is also based on the 1990 Gainesville incident, and on January 14, 2022, Discovery Plus premiered the paranormal documentary Scream, The True Story, starring Steve Shippey and Cindy Kaza. Back in the real world though, the victims from Gainesville who lost their lives and Rowling's many other victims are remembered. There are memorials all across the University of Florida campus, including five trees planted to honor the victims and a mural urging students to never forget. But that's the story of Danny Rowling, the Gainesville Ripper, who was the true story inspiration behind Scream. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe at Where Are They Now? I've been your host, Adam Andrews. Check me out on Instagram, and until next time, stay safe and well informed out there. Thanks for watching.